In our last video, we made an application where we could enter a shortcut, one of our favorite keyboard shortcuts, from your suggestions in your introduction, uh, in your introduction survey. In this video, we're going to enhance it by adding a list or a collection. In other words, at this point, we don't have a whole lot of memory here. We simply type something into a text box, click Add Shortcut, and then we see the notification. So we're going to keep that as is. Uh, but we're going to make a list that actually is going to keep a collection of all of these shortcuts, not just the one that happens to be in the text box. For this, we're going to need a new button. Uh, we'll keep Add Shortcut as it is. We're going to repurpose it a little bit, make it do something different. We're going to add a new button that, sh that says Show All Shortcuts. So I simply go back to the design view. I choose button, drag it down. Text for button 2, obviously that's not very appealing. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to say show all shortcuts. Okay, so again, shortcut, kind of like a keyboard shortcut, something like that. Okay, now I'm going to go to blocks. And here's the trick, is that my button 2, I can click on this button 2, I can scroll up. Whoops. Try that one more time. Scroll up. These are all the things I can do on my button 2. The thing I'm going to do most of the time is listen for button clicks, which means I need this when button to click do. Uh, that's the structure that I need. So I drag it down here. But how do I get text from button 1 to button 2? Well, we're going to need some kind of variable for that. A variable is a named place in memory, so a named memory location. And, be, and a, a scope is another good concept. A scope is where one method or, or where one procedure has the ability to do some work. So you see that our button one scope is this area that's outlined, outlined in brown. The button two scope is different, okay? Different scope. It means they have different yards, different fences. In other words, so imagine a neighborhood, different houses, different people have different yards. We need some way to get from button one's yard to button two's yard. We're going to do that with a variable, a named place in memory. So I click on variables, and this is going to need to be a global variable so that it can go from one block to the other. So we see initialize global name two. Okay, what does that mean? Well, initialize means it's the first time. We want to start it up. We want to get everything set. We want to make sure that the lot is in order. Uh, we want to make sure that all the plumbing is there. All these kind of initialization activities. Global, that's describing the type of variable. Global means that it can go, uh, it, it can be used in multiple scopes. So button one can see it, button two can see it as well. Name, well that's something that we need to come up to, come up with. And then two means what value are we putting in this global variable? So I'm going to drag this and take a look at the shape. Notice that it has a curved left end. It might be kind of hard to see on the video. It doesn't have one of these dimples right up here, which means we don't have to put it in an event handler, as you see here. The when button two click, when button one click, those are both event handlers. And they have this little dimple that's saying, okay, or, or this little notch will say, that's saying, okay, I can set off a chain of things to happen. Well, for this initialize, it doesn't need to be in one of these. It can just kind of be out here uh, in the open canvas. So first, let's give it a name. Let's call it shortcuts. Kind of like for keyboard shortcuts. Two, now take a look at that shape. You see that kind of has that little notch receiver. So it says, I need one of these puzzle pieces that doesn't have a flush or a curved left end. I need one that has a little notch. Okay. What are we going to put in that notch? Let's take a look at lists. I go to lists, and let's say uh, make create empty list. How about that? So we're going to initialize. So I'll just kind of drag and drop. There we go. We're going to initialize shortcuts to an empty list. OK, good. Now with that, here we're going to take this guy. Uh, then uh, we're, we're going to do a little bit of remodeling here. The button one, that's the one that's adding a hint. That's no longer going to show hints. That's only going to add them to the list that we've created up here. The showing of hints is going to happen in button two. And if we need a little refresher on that, let me show you. Uh, button one, add a shortcut. We're not going to uh, see the hint there. Button two, show all shortcuts. Okay. So I go back to blocks. 
I'm going to borrow this notification. I'm going to drag it and drop it right down here. And text box one text, we're going to need to do a little change with that as well. Let's just kind of leave it where it is for the moment. Okay, now button one, what am I going to do? For button one, I'm going to say, I'm going to go back to lists, and I'm going to say add item to list. Okay, we're going to marry two things together here. We're going to marry together the information we're getting from our text box with the list that we've created up here. So lists, add item to list. Okay, what item are we going to add to the list? The text that the user typed in the text box. Okay, and what list are we going to add it to? Well, that gets a little bit tricky. For that, we have to reach into our global variables. If I go to variables, and I'm going to say get, and then I'm going to say global shortcuts. Okay, so I know that was a bit of a jump in logic. Let's make sure we understand it. When button one is clicked, add item to list. What are we adding to the list? The text. It's in text box one. Text box one, remember? That's this text box at the top of our screen. What list are we adding it to? We're saying get global shortcuts. So global shortcuts is the variable that we identified up here. We called shortcuts. That's the name of our list that we're creating here. So take text, add it to the list that's associated with the name shortcut. Okay, now what does button two do? Button 2 is going to select a random item from that list. So let's go to list again, and let's say pick a random item from the list. From which list? Remember what we did up here? We need to access that same list again. So let's go to variables, and I'm going to say get, and we're going to say global shortcuts. Okay, I know that was a lot of talking, but take a look at what we have in common. Remember I said a global variable is something that can be used from one scope to another. Button 1 has scope here. Button 2 has scope here. Take a look at both of these places where we're plugging in list. We're plugging in get, get global shortcut. So do you see how this global variable named shortcuts, we're accessing it in our button 1 handler and we're accessing it in our button 2 handler as well. In button 1, we're putting something in. In button 2, we're taking a random item out. Okay, so I'm going to save, and we're ready to give this one a try. I'm going to connect. Uh, let's see, we will uh, reset connection, and we'll redeploy this on our emulator. Now our application is running, and let's talk about what's actually executed. At this point, the initialized global shortcuts, remember that has the curved in without the little dimple in it. So that's going to run at initialization. Initialization happens when our screen starts. So that has already happened. Neither of these two have happened yet because they are event based. They're waiting for us to take an action on the UI and then they are going to actually do some activity. Let's go ahead and invoke this first when button one click. So enter a helpful keyboard shortcut. Do you see how that shows up as hint text? And without a label, it's saving us a little bit of space. Okay, command A selects all items on, in a page or list. Let's use that one. Okay, command A selects all items. And I'm going to choose Add Shortcut. Now you see that kind of, we kind of have a usability issue here. First of all, there's no confirmation that the shortcut was added. We might want to do something like change the color of the background of the screen. That might be a good idea. We also probably want to clear out the text that is up here in this text box. So we'll remember that. Those are a couple usability things that we're going to want to take a look at. Okay, let's find another shortcut. Control Z undoes the last action. Okay, so we'll say Control Z. Whoops. Undo. Add shortcut. Okay, let's find another one. Uh, my favorite key in Windows is Windows key M, which takes you back to a uh, the desktop. So we'll say Windows M. returns to desktop. 
Okay, add shortcut. Now let me ask you, what have we done so far? We know that the initialize was called once and only once when the screen starts up. We only want to create this empty list one time. If we created it every time we click the button, we'd end up with an empty list with one item in it because every time we would click the button, we would recreate the list and add an item to it, and then we would recreate it again the next time we click the button. So it's important that we initialize that list only one time. Okay, now, when button one click, do add item to list. How many times have we done that? By my count, we've done that now three times. We've added three shortcuts to the list. When button two click, how many times have we called this event handler? Uh, the answer is none. So one time, three times, zero times. Let's go ahead and say show all shortcuts, although it's actually just going to pick one at random. But let's click and see what it shows us. Command A selects all items. Remember, it's just picking one at random, so we'll click again. Control Z undo. And because it's random, it picked another one. It could go back if I click it again and pick one we've already seen or pick a new one. Uh, we'll try it again. Command A selects all items. So you see it went back to the first one, again, because it's a random selection. I can keep clicking this, and eventually I will likely see, if I were to keep clicking it, Windows and returns to desktop. Sure enough, there we go. I'll see all three shortcuts uh, that I've added. So let's go ahead and wrap that video up here. In our next video, we'll explore how we can put a confirmation when the user clicks the button, also how we can change the screen color, and how we can clear out the text that we see in this text box. I look forward to seeing you then.